Welcome back to Healthy Dose Podcast with Dr. Joe and Dr. Buzz. I'm Dr. Joe Gambardella with Advanced Physical Medicine and Rehab in Miami, Florida. Hey, this is Dr. Buzz with Buckeye Physical Medicine and Rehab in Columbus, Ohio. How you doing tonight, Dr. Buzz? Excellent, man. How about you? Awesome. We had a great day today. Uh, we were actually, one of the things we do a lot are these corporate wellness events. We go into big corporations and kind of assess how workers are functioning, uh, try to minimize uh, time out from work or, or workers' comp claims. One of the easiest ways to do it is, is kind of just look at body composition. Um, today was a pretty special event because we went in with one of our uh, medical practitioners uh, and we looked at a couple of key hormone levels and blood marker levels um, just to kind of pinpoint if people are going to be diabetic, pre-diabetic, um, which you know, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, one of the leading causes of obesity uh, in the United States and time away from work. We took blood pressure um, to see if people are at risk because of that. And we also looked at testosterone levels. You know, people want to increase body mass and lose body fat, but we also find that as blood sugar starts to increase, it becomes more and more difficult to do that. So it was pretty out of the box, different than just going in and talking about lower back pain or neck pain. And people were really fired up to do it. We, we saw about uh, 30 plus people just in a couple of hours and got all those markers done. Nice. So, uh, but, I, you know, I, was gonna tell you, I, I think there's a lot more public awareness now too. Uh, you know, it, people are aware of low testosterone. If you think about it, you know, back when we were, you know, go back 20 years ago, you know, when you mentioned low T, people would think steroids and right. there's a misconception that steroids are bad. Right. Right. And now, you know, maybe thanks to, uh, Maybe thanks to uh, maybe some of the, the Viagra or something like that, or I, I don't know why, but there's better public awareness about it, and, and more and more people are treating it, and, and it's no longer something that people are ashamed of. But people actually want to do it. Yeah, the, 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 it almost requires no advertising. Like you said, we get people that come in every single day, um, and it's just it's just uh, almost an aside that they have to do blood work. They want to do it because they know the benefits, and it's really interesting in educating some people that really have these nine to five jobs or even eight to seven jobs where they're a little bit more focused on the work and, and maybe not as apt to look at social media. They're a little bit underinformed on some of these new trending topics. So it was really great to educate some of these people today. Like, for example, we looked at uh, a marker. There's hundreds of blood markers. You know, we look at quite a few of them. I don't even know how many it is, Buzz, when we take people in and we qualify them for medical weight loss or, you know, any type of bioidentical um, therapies. But we selected three or four, and the reason we did it was because, um, for example, hemoglobin hematocrit tells us a lot of information about the, the size and shape of these red blood cells. Um, we found some people today who were anemic. They didn't know it. So, you know, they have problems absorbing key nutrients like um, B6, folate, or iron, or maybe they have an internal problem where they're losing blood. You know, maybe it's a hemorrhoid, maybe something else. So we were able to make the appropriate referral there. Um, we, sit, we found some people that were way too high on the red blood cells, which puts them at risk for cardiovascular. Why? Because uh, if your blood volume is too high or too heavy, you're going to probably have increases in, um, in blood pressure, more filtration for the kidneys, which leads to different types of uh, uh, ailments like that. And it's one of the things that we see for people that are doing testosterone therapy unregulated, maybe just at a TRT center that don't do regular blood work. Uh, these are some of the markers that you know, as, as your body um, starts to produce more red blood cells, you need to be aware of it. Sometimes you need to let some of the blood go. And lastly, I'll just say this is I, I typically see these increasing in my practice over and over and over again for people who have sleep apnea. Well, you know, when they're struggling to breathe at night, stopping maybe two, three, four hundred times a night where they're not breathing, the body's really smart and it responds to this by making more red blood cells. Um, so with that, you have more oxygen, but at the same time, it's more of a stress on the, uh, on the circulatory system. I'm sure you see the same thing up there. Yeah, a, a lot of people, they'll go to, you know, and we hear it every week where people will come in and they'll say they're doing hormone therapy, you know, at the doctor's office. We'll ask, like, you know, what kind of protocol are you on? And they're going to the doctor's office, you know, once every two weeks or once every three weeks for a shot of testosterone. That's just the wrong way to do it. I mean, they feel terrible, you know, and they're, they're usually getting a pretty high dose during that. And then the same thing that you, you, you know, see that hematic, uh, hemoglobin hematocrit level high. Mm -hmm. And when that level's high, it makes you feel terrible. I mean, yep. when we have people come in and they have an issue with that, and, and literally they're, they're, the, the solution to that is we take their blood, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or tell them to donate their blood. Like literally immediately they feel like they have more energy. It's the craziest thing. So, um, 
you know, a lot of, you know, we, we talked about on past shows, you know, a regular doctor's office, a like non-specialist, they, they're not set up to do hormone, to treat a hormone patient because of level oversight, because of the follow-up blood works. There is no cookie cutter. It's not like, you know, with a lot of other medications, everyone takes the same dosage. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a different dosage, you know, it, you know, and, and if we're using estrogen blockers with it, we use, HC, you know, all these other things with it, there is no cookie cutter. So you really have to know what you're doing and look at the blood works and custom your, you know, each plan for each individual. You have three guys that weigh 200 pounds that look identical and their doses are totally different. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, um, one of the other levels that we were looking at today, just to kind of segue onto what you were saying about really specializing in this and having the dedication to look at each individual lab to make these individual prescriptions was just fasting blood glucose. It's another range. You'll hear us talk about this in previous shows and in future shows about lab panels being within what we call quote unquote normal ranges or being optimal for a desired outcome. So the fasting blood glucose markers that we that are pretty standardized on most major lab uh, testing corporations range between 65 and 99. But we all know that, you know, if you're within range and you're 99, you're operating at what we call a surplus. So here's what I mean by that. Fasting blood glucose simply means this. When you go to bed at night, there's sugar left over in the blood system. And the job of the body throughout the night is to take as much sugar out of the blood, deposit into the tissues of the body so you have energy to go when you wake up. Whatever's left over is measured in terms of fasting blood glucose. So, you know, the range, like we said, goes from 65 to 99. We saw people today, 99, 100, 101, and most doctors will call that fairly normal. But we know that 75 to 85 is the sweet spot. If you want to lose weight, if you want to lose body fat, you have to be somewhere between 75 to 85 in fasting blood glucose. And when you're at 99, and you still have some blood sugar left over in the morning that's not deposited into the tissues and you eat your first meal, you're starting to operate at a surplus. So day after day after day, you're operating at a surplus of, de- of depositing more fat and more sugar. And if, if your goal is weight loss and body fat, you'll never get there doing it that way. You actually burn out your pancreas. Your, your, your body's always secreting insulin. And you, and you, be, you know, that's what type two diabetes is, is your body just, your, your, your pancreas just burns out because there's so much glucose in the blood stream all the time. The body tries to uh, metabolize it and over time it just burns the pancreas out. And, you know, and, and type two diabetes is pandemic. And what I mean by pandemic, you know, the majority of our population is ending up with type two diabetes at this point. It's kind of a sad state and, and diabetes kills. You know, and, and as you know, Joe, type, type two diabetes is completely treatable and reversible with diet, mm-hmm. right? Not type one diabetes, where you know that you know, you know uh, child onset, but type two diabetes. If you diagnosed with type type two diabetes, this is completely reversible with yep. diet. Yep. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of people you know get diagnosed with type two diabetes, and because it's pandemic, they're almost like okay, it's just part of getting old. It's not part of getting old. Um. And they'll start off, you know, with you know, with a low dose medication, mm-hmm. but over time, it always gets worse if not changed with diet. Yep. Over time, it always gets worse. Yep. And next thing you know, they're on insulin, and the pancreas shuts down, yep. and now you're in essence a type one diabetic. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, and as a provider, it's frustrating to see how traditional doctors treat this when, when if someone would just simply correct their diet, lose some weight, this type two diabetes thing is done. It all goes hand in hand together, whether we're talking about bad knees, lower backs, uh, treating those people with, uh, you know, alignment, chiropractic, or even if it's a degenerative condition with tissue grafts that contain stem cells. When you, when you take a ride over to the mall on the busiest day and you see the middle of the mall where you see people with orthopedic shoes and swollen lower legs and, you know, uh, socks pulled up to their ankles and, and walkers and wheelchairs, nobody started out that way. They all started out with the quote-unquote normal back pain, neck pain, or knee, or knee pain, which we know is, is the furthest from that. And it's the same thing here. Is it fair to say there is no normal pain? There is no normal pain. That's right. I love that. Yeah, if you have pain, it's like if your check engine light's on, it's not normal. Right. It might be common. That, you know, a lot, of, a lot of cars have issues, and a lot of people, you can get injured. But I always tell people, if you've had pain that's been around for more than three or four weeks, you've got a problem, right? Now, if you stub your toe and it hurts today, tomorrow, I mean, you know, take, put some ice, you know, work it out. But I mean, yeah. if you got something and you has been bothering you for a month or two months, it's most likely not going to get better on its own, and it's only going to get worse with time. That's right. And just like you mentioned, you know, the people that start out with fasting blood glucose a couple of points out of range, most people think not a big deal. But 
people who are, who are on Genuvia and insulin and insulin pumps didn't start out that way. This is for the most for the most part, this is how they started out. And one of the purposes of our podcast, I know, is to get people to think a little bit outside the box and look at the body as a whole, where the body is capable of healing by itself. It's a self-healing organism. And when you give it the right ingredients, it will do that. And if you catch it early enough, you'll hear us talk about all these different types of advances with anti-aging and so on and so forth. But the best prescription that we give out, I know in both of our practices, Buzz, is prevention. Um, it's it's the key to anything. We, we don't want you to have to do stem cells. We don't want you to have to do these uh, diets. We want you to stay healthy for the rest of your life and focus your time and energy on other things. But we're here to catch you when you fall and, and there is no place to go. You said just the other day, like we get the worst of the worst. Uh, time is changing that. Our podcast, like the information we're disseminating, put out, people are starting to come to us earlier on in the game. But still, I, I, I think it's fair to say we get people that have been around the block and, and they're coming to us as a way to say, listen, this is my last opinion. I'm probably surgical or I'm probably going to have to take this medication. And that's when we run the labs and we find out that even though we're the last option, we're not, we're, it's, it's not the only hope. There is hope for these people. Let's take it a step further. I always tell people, you know, it's always better to be proactive than reactive, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what you have to understand is as you get older, if you're proactive with your health, eat good foods, you know, get your blood work done, handle your hormones. It's much easier than being reactive. Wait until you have, you know, a severely arthritic knee mm -hmm. or wait until, you know, you're, you're so overweight that you can't work out, you know, and, and we all have to make a decision, you know, are we going to be active for our lives? You know, we've all seen that, you know, 60, 70 year old, even 80 year old person that works out every day. And that's the person you want to, you know, yeah. you want, you want to be on your parents. In reverse, we've all seen that, that same age group, the person that's walking around with the, with the breathing thing on in a wheelchair. Like, and the only difference is one has taken responsibility for their health in most situations, and the other one is just kind of let life happen. Exactly. And if you let life happen, we all age and we all break down with time. But if you're proactive, you can definitely, you know, you can't stop the clock, but you can really slow it down. Mm-hmm. So when you're you're listening out there and you and you're sitting there with knee pain or back pain or you've been told you know you're pre-diabetic you don't know how to get it under control, you need to come see us. We have we have potentially the solution for you to get you back in the game, get your life back. Um, oftentimes I know we'll screen people um, just to see. More so we screen people, Buzz, um, complimentary. Uh, as a way of being complimentary and trying to help people get over a hurdle. But I know, at least in our office, we do it as much for us as we do it for the patient because we don't feel good charging a patient if we don't know that we can truly help them. So, you know, at times we'll go out and do these events and just as a public service, as a way to get, you know, the, the message out there. But these screenings give us the opportunity to find out truly if we can help people or not, or if we do have to make a second level uh, referral. And, you know, it's a way to let people know that when they say, well, how much does this cost? I can't afford it. Uh, I know my answer answer and yours is oh, you can't afford not to you know like what's what's the alternative you know go, like like we said earlier when you go to the mall and you see these people you don't want to be one of them so if you're sitting out there and your knees hurt your back hurts uh, you're going to want to go up to Buckeye Physical Medicine if you're in the uh, you know the uh, the northeast and, and the midwest up there advanced physical medicine and rehab down in South Florida we've dedicated our practices specifically to helping people just like you and, and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money and you know the crazy thing, people will spend what's an average car payment, two, three, four hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. and you're in your car how many minutes a day? Compared to your, I mean, yeah. hour, two hours tops, right? For the average I mean, person, that, I'm loud. I don't even drive that much. I mean, you live in Miami, you have more traffic, but you know, you know, you know, we'll say an average person is an hour a day, maybe. You're stuck in your body 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So what's that worth to you? You know, and and, and and there's too many people out that are just suffering in pain, and it's and it's never too late. That's the other thing. I mean, you know, I think some people will listen to this podcast and say, "Well, man, I already my knees are shot already. That you know, I, I've waited too long. It's never too late. If you're alive, your body can heal. Mm -hmm. And if you and if you're alive and your body can heal, why wait? Right. We uh, one of the other things we were looking at today, Buzz. Also, we've talked about it, and we'll continue to talk about it. Is um, testosterone primarily because it's such a strong, one of the strongest anti-inflammatory hormones that we have in our body. It's natural, it's self-made. Um, when you control inf inflammation, your body promotes healing. You're able to recover faster. Uh, and we speak about the ranges for men and women, a couple of key points that we look at. For example, men, there's a huge range, depending on which lab you look at, that goes anywhere from 250 to 1,000. 
and we all know the operating range, if you want to even consider working out, really should be between seven and 900. And there's a percentage of that testosterone that's even more important called free testosterone, and men want to be somewhere between 15 and 20. If you're not there, don't start working out without doing a medical consultation because you're going to get injured. You're going yeah, to Yeah, I was talking a buddy of mine the other day. Yeah, I hadn't seen him for years. Uh, he's my age. And he's like, man, you know, I've been working out, and I just can't lose weight, and I just feel terrible. So I was like, well, you know, why don't you come in? We'll do your blood work. We'll start there. He came in. His testosterone level, he's the same age as me. His free testosterone was eight. Oh my God. I was like, I mean, I actually told him, don't work. You know, why don't you, let's get your hormones under control. I, I don't want you to work out. Like, you can do some cardio, but like, that guy weight trains going to get hurt, right? Exactly. And he's that's what we said. Something, something's going to happen. That's like, exactly what we said. not work out. Yep. Let's do some cardio. Let's get your diet in. Mm-hmm. Um, I got him on. He, he started fat, you know, doing the 16 8 program. We tell him what to do. And I said, you know, in six weeks, once the, we get your hormones optimized, then we're going to, you know, we'll slowly introduce working out. But this guy here is, a, you know, just waiting to get injured. Yeah. And, and people should know what that number is. Like most people know what their blood pressure is. If you don't, you need to find out. Most people know what their blood sugar is. If you don't, you need to find out. But you know what your dress size is, your shoe size is. You can go out of the mall and buy these things. But you need to know what your testosterone number is. It's that important that you should be able to rattle it off and know it. And if it's not in that range, um, you know, the ways that we bring it up, we spoke about um, how these bioidenticals are made, Buzz, right? The hormones that were made in our body naturally are the same ones that will keep us healthy as we age, but we just can't make enough of them. So our bioidenticals... The other thing we have to realize is once your hormones go down, your testosterone, it never comes back. Yep. So you can't change your diet. You you can't uh, start working out. Uh, you can't go to GNC and buy something over the counter. There's there's no way to reverse your hormones. What about all these commercials, Buzz? That we keep seeing on TV. You know, increase your growth hormone 300 percent by taking uh, you know an over the counter amino acid. Um, they have all these pro athletes coming on saying, I, I feel better now than I ever have before because I take this over the counter supplement that has zinc and uh, you know a couple of other ingredients in it, um, and increase your free testosterone 300 percent. We have those people come in. You, Joe, you probably see the same thing. I have people come in all the time. I mean, they, they must sell a lot of that stuff. I, I swear, we have multiple patients come in every week and say, you know, I'm taking this, but I still don't feel good. So I don't know if it's my, mm-hmm. can't, I, I don't think it's my testosterone, maybe something else is wrong with me. And we'll take their levels and they're just in the toilet. <laughs> there is yeah. no over the counter growth hormone booster or testosterone booster, period. Mm-hmm. So there, there is none. I've never seen it. There's no, nothing out there that's all, that's all uh, BS. Yeah. And for the, frankly, right, for the same amount of money that they're paying to get a couple of bottles out of the month, oftentimes they'll find out to do a real program with, a, with, with a, an organization that specializes in that type of treatment. It's less expensive. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's about the same price. I mean, and the other thing I'll, I'll tell you, what is even in those things? Is it something that can be dangerous? You know, I had a bunch of patients come in that were taking there's these things called SARMs. Yeah. Their, and their liver panels were crazy. Like their liver functions were just way out of whack, and they mm-hmm. felt terrible. Uh, and, and, I mean, they didn't even know what the heck they're taking. They, you know, people look. I mean, unfortunately, the internet's great. It's a great resource. There's lots of really good information on there, but there's lots of false information too. Unfortunately, you know, and, and you can't go wrong with what the body naturally produces. Mm-hmm. And all we do is replace what the body produces. We don't use anything synthetic. Bioidentical means it's identical to what the body produces. Yeah, and, and we simply restore those to a youthful level. Yep. And people should know that plant, you know, that bioidenticals are plant based. You know, everyone's talking about being vegan and being healthy and, you know, uh, putting into the body what's going to make the body healthy and grow. They're, they're plant based. They actually uh, have a base of wild DM, whether it's going to be a testosterone mm-hmm. or a progesterone product. And then, I mean, that's what the body makes. That's why you can't patent it. That's why it can't be sold for profit. It's not changed from its molecular structure. And really, the only side effects that we see buzz down here is if someone's dosed incorrectly, and usually it's on the low side. They're not getting the full benefit from it. Low side, or, or you know, or dosing. You know, like you know, pretty much if you're seeing another provider, you know, if you're doing, uh, I, I know we both do a lot of testosterone injectable. That's our preferred method. If you're not getting injected once a week, you're doing it wrong. I'll tell you that right now, or twice a week, even right. But but yep. you know, if you're going every other week, once a month, you're better off not even doing it. Because you're going to mess yourself up, yeah. right? Yep. You know, and and, and you got to be doing blood works, and, and you really should be taking something to help increase your own natural levels to whether that's going to be HCG or Clomid, you know, mm-hmm. to keep your own levels going too, because there is a negative feedback loop on this stuff here. Because there are some people that just go somewhere and they'll get a bottle of testosterone. There's more to it than just taking a bottle of testosterone. Right. You know, you, you, uh, your vitamin level is good. You're taking vitamin D. 
uh, what, what is your estrogen levels? Are you on some type of, of, of estrogen control? Are you doing something to keep your own function? There, there's a lot to it. It's not just a bottle of testosterone. Yeah, that is, it's so, so, so important. What you just said is keep the body working also, not to suppress our own. It doesn't matter what your age is either. At, at some age, you're always producing some testosterone. And, and really, the goal of bioidentical replacement is to take the stress off the body, not, not to completely take over what the body does naturally. So you're keeping the brain of the body working properly. You're just taking stress off it so it works more efficiently. I mean, that's definitely the way I like to say it too. The growth uh, hormone boosters we use are work the same way, Joe. I mean... Uh, uh, you know, growth hormone levels steadily decline, you know, pretty fast after pa- past age 30, mm-hmm. you know, and, and one thing we did talk a little bit, you know, if you're listening to the show, how would you know if you have low T? So what are the symptoms of low, low testosterone for males and females? You know, you know, typically, you know, some of the telltale signs is you, you don't get sleep good at nighttime. You wake up, you know, you, you, you know, uh, multiple times in the night have a hard time falling asleep or, or, or wake up and can't fall back asleep, uh, decrease energy level. Uh, a big one's mental focus. You know, you just can't focus like you used to. You can't. You're, you're fo- you know, foggy thought. Uh, obviously, everyone things, knows, right, Buzz? Like, you know, people struggle to recall, you know, simple things without writing them down. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, it's not just libido. Like that guy who had a seven. He's like, dude, I thought my testosterone was fine because I'm. I don't want to give too much information, but he's like, I'm having plenty of sex. Mm-hmm. But, but. Seven's terrible. It's like a seven-year-old, <laughs> like an eighty-year-old guy, right? So just because you have a good libido or, or not, that's just one sign. But there's all these other signs, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and growth hormones, another one. You know, growth hormone. How, how do you know? Well, the big thing I think, is, in particular with males, but females too, is starting to get adiposity or fat around your midsection. You know, and you'll see people that'll be pretty lean arms and legs. They eat properly, but they got that gut. That's growth hormone deficiency. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll end up with more injuries. Uh, sleep pattern. Uh, another big thing, you know, females in particular spend a lot of money on cosmetics. The best way to stay pretty is from the inside out, taking hormones and growth hormone boosters. That's much more effective than putting some type of lotion on your skin. You know, but your skin aging, your hair thinning, these are all signs of growth hormone deficiency. Mm-hmm. And the same thing, you know, if you're above 30, you would benefit from a growth hormone booster. And we don't use growth hormone. And the, and the reason we don't use growth hormone is twofold. Number one, growth hormone, uh, which is produced in the pituitary. If you would, if we just give you straight up growth hormone, number one, very difficult to dose properly. And when you're doing injectable, you're just getting that that spurt one time. It's not throughout the day, right? You're not doing anything to stimulate the pituitary. And if anything, if you take regular growth hormone, you shut your own pituitary down. And I have several uh, patients that were that are bodybuilders that their pituitaries don't produce growth hormone. And these guys are a mess, right? Yeah. But they've t- they took growth hormone for years, right? And that never comes back they're never going to recover you know we use peptides and the peptides and what's different with them is number one peptides are just chains of amino acids we have over seven thousand peptides in the body so totally natural and they're just a signaling molecule to get your pituitary that produces growth hormone to produce more growth hormone Mm -hmm. there's no negative feedback And, and what the research actually shows joe even if you take peptides for a couple months and get off your pituitary it revitalizes it and it keeps producing over time yeah it has the, so the, it's actually a positive feedback, not a negative feedback. Yeah, so it's you, pretty incredible. Your body never becomes resistant to it. If anything, yeah. it just primes the pump. We were talking a little bit about the show earlier today, Buzz, about the uh, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, which is you know, a lot of information for, uh, for our listeners. But, but I'll just tell you that when you have this stress on the body, there's certain hormones that are going to go down, like testosterone and growth hormone, other hormones that are going to go up, like cortisol. You know, kind of you'll see an increase in one, decrease in another. Um, and when you have elevated levels of cortisol, it affects the body in so many different ways. Like one of the first things that we look at with patients that are struggling to lose weight in addition to testosterone and growth hormone is, uh, is thyroid function. And thyroid is such an important hormone that is so overlooked. Like there's so many markers to look at a healthy um, thyroid. For example, a standard blood panel just looks at thyroid stimulating hormone. Is your thyroid being stimulated? Uh, and, he, and if it's not, you know, if the numbers are too high and you have supposedly sluggish thyroid function or it's too low, most doctors will treat specifically and solely based on that number. But there's five or six markers that give you so much more information, like specifically free T3, free T4, reverse T3, thyroglobulin antibody, um, and thyroid peroxidase. Like maybe you have an autoimmune condition that's affecting the thyroid. 
elevated levels of cortisol prevent your body from making the proper amount of these thyroid hormones to help you lose weight, to help you feel good. So really, you know, we take these complex issues and make it very easy for you. You fill out some paperwork, you get the examination, we look at the blood work and we tell you what you need. It's, it's that simple, but it's, a, it's an A to Z approach where you're looking at all these systems of the body so that you have the opportunity to function and feel your best. Yeah, and, and I always tell people, the blood work never lies. Yep. You know, and, you know, people, you know, ask me, do I need this or that? I do blood work. The blood work's going to show us exactly what you need. You know what, Buzz? Today, yeah. we were, when we were working with these, uh, these great folks, um, I said, so when was the last time you had comprehensive blood work? I'd say over 50% of them haven't had any blood work or did not have any blood work within the past five years. And wow. not knowing is not knowing and not having a symptom is not any way to go through life because those are the people that get the sickest that are hardest to treat. So with our standard panel of blood work, we're doing how many panels a year? At least uh, we four, do at least four, four six, at least right? four panels a year, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's yeah. you know, that's and what Maybe we another want. thing you should clarify here too, too, Doc, is, and then you have the other thing where people say, well, I get my blood work done, you know, every year I get a, a full panel and I'll say, well, go ahead and send it over, let me check it out. and. Then, they don't test any hormones, any thyroid. Mm -hmm. They just do like a standard CBC metabolic panel, looking at cholesterol, which is that's a whole other show we can do on cholesterol. You know, they'll you know they'll say, oh, my doctor says I'm high on cholesterol, so I'm not on uh, cholesterol lowering medication, which messes them up even worse. Mm -hmm. But they're not up. They don't do panels. You know, very few doctors do panels on hormones because they don't treat them. Right. right. You know, and, and as we said in the past, I can't tell you. People will come in. They'll, they'll say that. I went to my doc. And I told him I didn't have energy. And my libido was down. I was having a hard time focus. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm 40 years old. And my doctor said, "Well, you can't have low T. You're too young. You, it sounds like you're suffering with some depression. Let's let's start off with this depression medication first, and don't even do a blood work." Mm -hmm. So that should be really the first thing. That's where people want to start out. So we, you're, you know, you're listening out there. You've heard a lot of information. What's step one? Step one is get the diagnostics. The, like you said, the labs don't lie. Uh, if you're struggling with low energy, fatigue, you're having trouble transforming your body, come in and do the lab work. If you're sitting there with lower back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, come in and get the diagnostic x-rays. We'll get the MRI referral and find out exactly what you have and, and, you know, and figure out the best ways to treat it. Dr. Buzz, tell everybody out there how they find you and how they can ask you questions even through email. Yeah, so you can uh, go to our website, which is buckeyetmr.com, or my or uh, just email me directly. I respond to all my emails. My email is uh, just dr b u z z k is in kite at gmail.com. Dr. Buzz K. And the office number up there, Doc, is six one four eight seven one two two seven three. Perfect. And if you're down in the Southeast, uh, Advanced Physical Medicine and Rehab is the practice. 305-598-8788 is our number. You can check us out at apmrmiami.com and our alternate web website, miamidiscenter.com. Also check out our YouTube page, apmrmiami.com. What's in the pipeline? We have a, a new podcast um, website coming called the healthydosepodcast.com we'll be giving you more information on the link below check for that uh, next episode with dr buzz we're going to be talking moving into uh, the next month about um, how to make the knees healthier so you can play tennis how you can get ready for that beach body so we'll have lots more great information and some really cool uh, guests coming up in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned we'll see you next time thanks guys